and welcome to Gear Rock Farms. In this video, it's gonna be all about spreading fertilizer. We just finished up with first crop alfalfa here, and it's time to put some fertilizer on and spread some manure. Our trailer just showed up here this afternoon. We got four ton of a, a mix that's primarily potash. We're gonna be putting that on all the hay ground that we just took off, or majority of it. The company that we buy the fertilizer from, they also rent out spreaders, so that's how this deal's working. This isn't our spreader, we're just using it because of the fertilizer that we purchased. We're able to use it and it's it's worked into the whole the whole deal. But let's give you guys a look at the product. Like I said, it's primarily potash. There's a little bit of nitrogen and a little bit of phosphorus too, but it's a majority of it is potash, potassium. For those of you that aren't familiar with nutrients, and um, growing stuff, it's N, P, and K, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Dicot crops or crops like alfalfa or soybeans take a lot of potassium. Since it's early in the year here, and the forecast, it looks like we're going to get some rain here in the next couple of days, so that will incorporate our fertilizer. We're going to feed all the ground that we just took first crop off in order to promote growth the rest of the year. And help build up our soils over time. Potash is one of those nutrients on a dairy farm or any type of farm that raises alfalfa that's hard to overdo. Alfalfa sucks a lot of, lot of potash out of the ground. So if you're able to afford it and it works into your plan, it's ideal to stay ahead of it and, and keep your nutrients topped off. So that's what we're gonna do here today. I gotta get the trailer hooked up, check over the settings, make sure we're putting out the right rate per acre. And then uh, we'll head out to the fields and, and get to spreading. So we got it all hooked up. We got our PTO, which drives our spinners in the back. And then we have our hydraulics hooked up, which raises and lowers a wheel that drives our apron and that's this system over here so the hydraulics will raise and lower this sometimes they have a stop in them doesn't look like it and then these are the spinners which throws the product and here's the apron which brings the product to the back of the machine so to make sure that your trailer is set correctly you got to come back here or somewhere on the trailer there's normally a chart it's on the back of the machine here so right now we're in the low range, which would be this bracket here. This one's the high range, and then this I think would be for lime. But anyways, you can see our sprockets over there. We're on the bigger one, 60 to 11. And you would uh, figure out what your density is of your product. This is mainly potash, so we're going to be pretty heavy. So we're going to go with 70. So then you would come to whatever rate you want, which we're shooting for around 200. We come over here and it says three. And then you'd come here, we got one, two, three. So a tad below three would get us around 200. So there you go. And then you don't have to watch your speed like you would with a manual sprayer. The speed is all of the apron is all dictated off of your tire here. And the apron will slow down based on how fast you're moving. So we're gonna make our way up to the top of the hill, take our time, because this is a pretty heavy load. And then we'll, we'll start spreading on the bigger piece, get some of the weight off, and check our pattern when we're up there. In the meantime, I think Daddy's gonna be spreading some manure. Now that we got some ground open, he's gonna take advantage of it too and, and put some manure on. So now before I get started, I kind of wanted to show you how this works. So you make sure you got your PTO and your hydraulics hooked up. Throw your PTO on, that engages your spinners. And then I think I have my hydraulics on this lever. So that should be engaging our wheel, which means dropping it down. We'll rev it up a little and go check. So our two wheels are touching. Our drive wheel is on our floater tire here and our spinners are spinning. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off 
and I'm going to pay attention to when product starts to leave the back of the machine. So then I know exactly where I started. So I imagine I'll probably have to go 50 to 100 feet before I start to see product shooting out the back. Looks like everything's okay. I'm gonna put you guys on here somewhere, so hope you enjoy the ride. Looks like uh, the button came apart on our PTO shaft, the locking mechanism that goes to the PTO on the tractor. And I, I, I turned back and I was like, huh, oh, where'd that go? So I'm thinking we're done spreading for the night because uh, being that it's not our trailer, I don't think we should have to mess around with something like this. Well, we'll see. Such a bummer because we're about half done. So, is what it is. That's the crappy part about these rental trailers is they're just, they're like anything else that's a rental. They're just beat up, just used, and then they live in fertilizer their whole lives. Ah, that really sucks. I really wanted to get that done tonight, but 
we'll have to call them and, and see what they want us to do. We might have one that we could throw on there, but being it's their trailer, they might not even want us to mess around. So we'll head back to the yard and see what they want to do. So we're back at the fertilizer spreader project and dad had the bright idea of just trying to put a bolt in place of that locking mechanism and see if that holds on there. This bolt's a little bigger, but then we just file the end down so it comes through. We can even drill a hole through it. We'll figure something out here. This is not the end of the world. Dad's busy uh, machining a bolt, shaving it down a little. But looking at the weather, I don't think we got to worry too much anymore. It's there's just some scattered shower, slight chances for tomorrow. Same it's been for the past two days. And I think it's just because of this heat. They don't know if anything could pop up. Hopefully we'll be able to get it kind of put back together. So someone's able to finish tonight or even later tomorrow. Here you go, that's what dad came up with. Some farmer ingenuity. Hopefully that holds, hopefully it doesn't rattle around on there. I think for just this one load it'll be all right. You did that every day, eventually that would wear through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to ruin the shaft on the tractor. But anyways, this is the potash mix. The other mix that's gotta be spread is more of a grass mix, so it's got some more urea in it, or nitrogen, in order to convince those grasses to keep going. But I gotta go back to working my day job and I think dad's gonna finish that tonight or possibly tomorrow. Get the rest of that off and put his other fertilizer on as well. He's got maybe 20 to 30 acres with that other mix as well. If you guys were wondering what the nutrient layout was, the one mix is a 5, 8, 12. And then the one we're spreading currently is a 2430. Nitrogen's the first one, phosphorus is the second one, and potassium is the third one. And then there's a lot of micronutrients in these mixes, a lot of micronutrients. We got calcium, magnesium, sulfur, boron, copper, zinc, so on and so forth. A lot of good micronutrients. That's why dad buys this fertilizer. Uh, I may be wrong on this, but just you've been using it for maybe 15 years now. I think you could put this stuff in your kid's sandbox. It might be better than the well, sand. <laughs> so I, with my off farm job, I work with super synthetic fertilizer, just your typical potash, urea, AMS, and there's definitely a lot of salt in that compared to this stuff. So, you know, my, my help from yesterday too, he was, we were talking about a lot of this type of stuff and he even thought, you know, the, the salt in the fertilizers may be more harmful to the environment or your land and, and the chemicals are using to control weeds and stuff. There's a lot of unknown. Yeah. A lot of, you know, they need to do more research to decide. You know, it seems like you're gonna save yourself on one end of things and, and change a product that hurts you on a different area. Yeah, personally, I think when it comes to fertilizers and things like that, on a operation like this where it's long, 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 long term, and it's owned, it's ground that we, we're gonna own for future generations. We might as well put some extra effort into buying some high-end fertilizer and, and creating a program where we're not buying a lot of fertilizer, where we're using mainly our manures and our cover crops and very, we're not, maybe what, once, twice a year, you're putting on a little bit of this, this synthetic fertilizer. So we, we put it on after we cut, make the first cutting. Let's see, it's my more heavier stands, like the new seedings and the, the, the alfalfa fields more to kind of brace them up. And then not so much some of my pasture fields. Once in a while we'll do some stuff in there, maybe some biokel or something that way. But they all get, everything gets manured anyway. But you don't want to put too much manure on that alfalfa neither. And then after we take like the oats off, there might be 10 to 12 acres worth of stuff we'll put some potash on that just to get that new seeding established good. Yep. And it seems like that's your big thing. So if we had plenty of hay, like we used to have some rented acres and we did, you know, that stuff got sold and then it, we didn't, we weren't able to have that anymore. So then, you know, then you can help yourself out using some fertilizers and things to get a little more yields on what you already have. You know, we got steep fields to drive across them. You want to get something. 
Yeah, there's a little tip bit on our fertilizer program. And uh, just like any other farming video, it, it wouldn't be a normal day if something didn't break or, <laughs> or go wrong. So. Well, the, that's the thing I've been saying to guys, you know, when they talk about what went wrong, I said, you know how to prevent that. Just stay in bed all day and do absolutely nothing. Nothing will get done, you won't accomplish nothing, you probably won't even feel very good about things, but nothing probably will break, neither. It's kind of a given, the more stuff you do, the more issues you're gonna have with the things you're doing. There you go, a little words of wisdom at the end of the fertilizer video. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments with uh, your guys' fertilizer program. For those of you that farm, we'd be interested to hear about it. And uh, also make sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos.